News comes first. Now on Good Morning El Paso and breaking overnight, El Paso police investigating a deadly crash on the west side. The details from around the clock crew live on the scene. An appearance from Clinton and reports of turmoil in the transition. I'm ABC's Janae Norman with the latest with President-elect Trump up next. Plus, a police officer who fatally shot a man during a traffic stop is now facing charges. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland, this is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. Rise and shine and good morning to you, El Paso, Las Cruces, and Juarez. I'm Stephanie Valle. And I'm Hillary Florin. Good morning, everyone. Let's get things started by talking about the wind cast. You know, you got the right hairdo today. I didn't sure you? did. Put and it all up because yeah. you listened to Nicole yesterday. I did. And Nicole, you were showing that hairspray around earlier, too. <laughs> yes, you're going to need that extra hairspray this morning and this afternoon. The wind's already picking up. Let's take a look at our ABC7 WeatherNet site, sponsored by the mattress firm Northeast El Paso. If you live around Travis Elementary School, Notice wind gust at 46 miles per hour. So that is why we issued that first alert. It is windy in the Northeast. Park Elementary School, close to 30 miles per hour. Not too bad at the Texas Tech Hill Science Center, but the winds are still up at 18 miles per hour. So those are our peak wind gusts as of now. The winds are expected to continue throughout the afternoon. Strongest on the east side of town, northeast side of town, with winds out of the west at 15 to 25 miles per hour. We are expecting our peak wind gusts between lunchtime at and 6 o'clock, but again, winds already picking up. Temperature-wise, we're in the 50s, Las Cruces, 65, El Paso. Although we are tracking a cold front, it is not affecting us just yet. Again, it's mild in El Paso. Wind advisory is in effect until 7 o'clock. This does include northeast El Paso, east El Paso, so Lower Valley, Fabens, Tornillo, you're also included in this wind advisory. Doppler radar is showing us that we're not seeing any rain in the forecast this morning or this afternoon, just windy conditions. So coming up at 6.07 with your weather and traffic on the 7s, we have a look at your weather net site, wind gust in southern New Mexico, storm outlook plus your bus stop forecast for today. Stephanie? All right, thank you, Nicole. At 6.02 to breaking news out of West El Paso, police confirm one person is dead after a crash on I-10 near Trans Mountain. Good morning, El Paso's Denise so Levis is live with the latest details. Denise. Good morning. We are out here at the scene still. I-10 West is still closed off this morning and investigators are still here on the scene trying to figure out exactly what led up to the crash. We know one person was killed and a second person was taken to the hospital. Giving you a closer look, the front when the front windshield of the truck I should say was covered with a black tarp so as investigators are still out here as well taking photos and just taking measurements uh, we are still trying of course many questions that have been answered special traffic investigators were called out here which means that this area could be closed off for a few more hours we have video that was shot shortly after it happened and we know that it was described as a fiery crash over radio transmissions as first responders arrived to the scene. It doesn't appear like there were any other cars involved and at this point we don't know exactly what led up to the crash investigators trying to figure that out right now. So back out here live, uh, we do know that this is definitely going to impact the morning commute. We've already seen the traffic pick up a little more on Northwest Boulevard, but we know because I-10 is closed off. A lot of drivers are taking detours, so we'll send things back over to the studio with ABC7 traffic track reporter Mauricio Casillas, who has those details. Good morning, Mauricio. Hey, Denise, good morning. Yeah, it's definitely going to start to impact drivers soon, especially since it's near Canutillo High School. So students and parents that are heading out there, you're going to want to listen up. And it's also close to EPCC's Northwest Campus. So here's what we're looking at right now. Traffic closed off on I-10 West at Artcraft. Our speed right now leading up to that 35 miles per hour. So slower than what we're used to seeing. Of course, the crash is a little bit closer there to Trans Mountain. So here are your alternate routes. On I-10, you're forced off on Artcraft. And then North Desert Boulevard currently blocked locked off, so you either have to take a right onto Paseo del Norte, and then a left to Wrestler. That takes you to Trans Mountain, where you can remerge onto Trans Mountain, or you can take a left at Artcraft, right on Donovan, and then Spur 16 will also take you to Trans Mountain. Let's give you a live look outside with our ABC7 Textile cameras, and here's what we're looking at right now. This is I-10 at Artcraft. That's where it's blocking off, and here's where that traffic is being siphoned off, and we're starting to see it build up. So, of course, if you're heading out there, give yourself a little bit more time. Hillary? Good advice. All right. Thanks so much, Mauricio. Hillary Clinton made her first public appearance since conceding the White House. This as controversy continues to plague the presidential transition. ABC's Janae Norman has more. 
The Democratic presidential nominee making her first public appearance since the crushing loss. I know many of you are deeply disappointed about the results of the election. I am too, more than I can ever express. Remember, Hillary got more votes than Donald Trump. Do you understand what that means? More, yes! Up big in the popular vote, by the time all the votes are counted, she may well end up with more raw votes than all but one of the men ever elected. The exception, Barack Obama. There have been a few times this past week when uh, all I wanted to do was just to curl up with a good book or our dogs and never leave the house again. At the same time, turmoil for the Trump transition. I think there is some confusion going on uh, about a chain of command coming out of New York. Former team member and Congressman Mike Rogers commenting on reports of disorder polluting the presidential transition. But Trump trying to remain optimistic in a tweet that sounded like a reality show promo, posting a very organized process taking place. At the center of the transition, Jared Kushner, Trump's son in law. ABC News confirming the transition. The transition team has requested national security clearance for the real estate developer who has no government experience. This, as the president-elect, deals with backlash surrounding the hiring of Steve Bannon, former head of Breitbart News, with alleged ties to white supremacists. Trump is holding another series of meetings today with advisors and political leaders. Among them, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger and South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, who may be considered for Secretary of State. Janae Norman, ABC News, Washington. And new this morning, President-elect Donald Trump may be looking at South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley to be his Secretary of State. That is according to a Trump transition source. Despite their rocky past, Haley and Trump are set to meet Thursday along with others, including former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger and Florida Governor Rick Scott. Before the election, Haley said she was not a fan of Trump and backed Marco Rubio for the GOP nomination. And Trump called the Republican governor's stance on illegal immigration weak. Haley is South Carolina's first female and Indian American governor. It's now 6.07. We're going to take a break from the headlines and talk about our first alert that's in effect. Hi, Nicole. Good morning. Winds are already starting to pick up on the east side of town in El Paso and northeast El Paso. We'll get to the weather net sites in just a few minutes. Let's talk about our bus stop forecast for today. El Paso, we're actually off to a pretty mild start this morning. Temperatures ranging between the mid-50s to 60s for some areas. It's already windy in El Paso, and we're in the 40s to 50s in Las Cruces for some locations. Our ABC7 weather net site sponsored by the mattress firm showing Northeast El Paso. If you live around Travis Elementary School, wind gusts have peaked at 46 miles per hour. So give yourself enough time before you head out this morning because the winds are already picking up. Our wind gust tracker showing at 7 o'clock at the El Paso Airport and in Las Cruces. Winds are in the 20s, also windy around the area. Mountains, TRC, Silver City, and Dimming around 11 o'clock. Wind gusts are at 30 miles per hour. So you can see throughout the morning, we're already seeing those wind gusts pick up. Temperature wise, not too bad. Las Cruces, we're at 54 degrees. You may still need a light jacket if you're stepping out right now. And we're also under clear skies, but we're under cloudy skies, mostly cloudy skies in El Paso, 65. Notice our winds west to southwest at 35 miles per hour. So that's why we issued the first alert for the winds that we're not only tracking now, but for this afternoon. But details on what you can expect for the rest of the afternoon, your work week, and your weekend are coming up in your full forecast. Mauricio? Hey there, Nicole. Well, it's certainly been a busy Thursday morning so far in the traffic department. As we know, West Side drivers dealing with that complete closure of I-10 West as you start to approach Trans Mountain. But as Nicole mentioned, we've got windy conditions in the northeast and also in East El Paso. So if you're heading out the door, you're going to want to make sure to check for debris as you're heading out on those roadways. Now we're also looking at green conditions, though, for the most part in Las Cruces. Good morning to you. 68 miles per hour, our speed on I-10 West. 67 if you're heading east towards El Paso. 63 right now on I-25. But there will be a closure of Highway 70 starting up in just a couple of minutes at 625. It's going to be between mile marker 172 and mile marker 192 going to be going on for an hour. Let's give you a live look outside now with our ABC7 text dot cameras. So this is I-10 at red. This is I-10 west. You can see police are over there sort of funneling traffic off at Artcraft. Not seeing too many delays just yet, but of course we'll have updates throughout. Good morning, El Paso. Okay, thank you so much, Mauricio. And keep it here. We have much more to come as we continue with the headlines. Including more arrests been made in the murder case of Anthony Trejo. We have the latest on the investigation buy shoes and they maybe buy them online or they go into the store and they get what they think looks cute or what's pretty and that shoe doesn't necessarily have the support. Plus many are beginning their training for the upcoming marathon in El Paso. We have some tips to get you the right gear.
It's 610. This is ABC7, where news comes first.